let's stretch the timelines out. Okay. So let's not talk about 30 years. Let's talk about 200 years. <laughs> like, what is this going to look like in 2200? You tell me, you're smarter than me. <laughs> I mean, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. What is the answer? We'll have quantum computers by then. What's a quantum computer? A quantum computer is a completely different type of computing architecture, which in simple terms, basically allows you to, pr those, those calculations that I described at the beginning, billions and billions of flops, those billions of flops can be done in a single computation. So everything that you see in the digital world today relies on computers processing information. And, and the speed of that processing is a friction. It kind of slows things down, right? I, you remember back in the day, old school modems, 56K modem, the dial up mm. sound and the image <sighs> pixel loading, like pixel by pixel. That was because the computers were slow. And we're getting to a point now where the computers are getting faster and faster and faster. And quantum computing is like a whole new leap, like way, way, way beyond where we, where we currently are. And so by analogy, how would I understand that? So like if my, I've got my dial up modem over here <laughs> and then quantum computing over here. Right. What's the, how do I, <laughs> what's the difference? Well, what, I don't know what, it's really difficult to Is explain. Is it like a billion times faster? Oh, it's, it's, it's like, it's like billions of billions of times faster. It's, it's, it's much more than that. I mean, one way of thinking about it is like a floppy disk, which I guess most people remember mm -hmm. 1.4 megabytes a physical thing back in the day in 1960 or so that was basically an entire pallet's worth of computer that was moved around by a forklift truck right <laughs> which is insane today you know you have billions and billions of times that floppy disk in your smartphone in your pocket tomorrow you're going to have billions and billions of smartphones in minuscule wearable devices. There'll be cheap fridge magnets that, you know, are constantly on everywhere, sensing all the time, monitoring, processing, analyzing, improving, optimizing, you know, and they'll be super cheap. So it's super unclear what do you do with all of that knowledge and information. I mean, it's ultimately knowledge creates value. When you know the relationship between things, you can improve them, you know, make it more efficient. And so more data is what has enabled us to build all the value of, you know, on online in the last 25 years. And so what does that look like in 150 years? I can't really even imagine, to be honest with you. It's very hard to say. I don't think everybody is going to be working. Why would we? Yeah, what? Well, well. We wouldn't be working in that kind of environment. I mean, look, the other trajectory to add to this is the cost of energy production. You know, AI, if it really helps us solve battery storage, which is the missing piece, I think, to really tackle climate change, then we will be able to source, basically source and store infinite energy from the sun. And I think in 20 or so years time, 20, 30 years time, that is gonna be a cheap and widely available, if not completely freely available resource. And if you think about it, everything in life has the cost of energy built into its production value. Mm -hmm. And so if you strip that out, everything is likely to get a lot cheaper. We'll be able to desalinate water. We'll be able to grow crops much, much cheaper we were able to grow much higher quality food, right? It's gonna power new forms of transportation. It's gonna reduce the cost of drug production and healthcare, right? So all of those gains, obviously there'll be a huge commercial incentive to drive the production of those gains, but the cost of producing them is gonna go through the floor. I think that's one key thing that a lot of people don't realize that is a reason to be hugely hopeful and optimistic about the future. Everything is gonna get radically cheaper in 30 to 50 years. Hmm. 
So 200 years time, we have no idea what the world looks like. It's a, uh, this goes back to the point about being, is it, did you say transhumanist? Right. What does that mean? Transhumanism, I mean, it's a group of people who basically believe that you, that, that humans and our soul and our being will one day transcend or move beyond our biological substrate. Ah, okay. So our physical body, our brain, our biology is just an enabler for your intelligence and who you are as a person. And there's a group of kind of crackbots, basically, I think, <laughs> who think that we're going to be able to upload ourselves to a silicon substrate, right? A computer that can hold the essence of what it means to be Stephen. So you in 200, in 20, uh, in, in 2200, well, could well still be you by their reasoning, but you'll live on a server somewhere. Why are they wrong? I think about all these adjacent technologies like biological, um, biological advancements. Did you call it like biosynthesis or something? Was yeah, it? synthetic biology. Synth synthetic biology. Um, think about the nanotechnology development. Right. Think about quantum computing, the, the progress in artificial intelligence, the, everything becoming cheaper. And I think, why, why are they wrong? It's hard to say precisely, but broadly speaking, I haven't seen any evidence yet that we're able to extract the essence of a being from a brain, right? It's that, that, it, that, that kind of dualism that, you know, there is a mind and a body and a spirit. That is a, I, I, I don't think, I don't see much evidence for that, even in neuroscience, um, that actually it's much more one and the same. So I don't think, you know, you're going to be able to emulate the entire brain. So their thesis is that, well, some of them cryogenically store their brain after death. Jesus. So they, they have it, they've, they, they wear these like, you know how you have like an organ donor tag or whatever. So they have a cryogenically freeze me when I die tag. And so they, there's like a special like ambulance services that will come pick you up because obviously you need to do it really quickly. The yeah. moment you die, you need to get put into a cryogenic freezer to preserve your you know, brain forever. I, I personally think this is, this is nuts, but you know, their belief is that you'll then be able to reboot that biological brain and then transfer you over. This is the most crazy stat you'll ever hear. 93.3% of you that watch this channel frequently haven't yet hit the subscribe button. So if you liked this clip and if you like what we do here, please can you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And in return, I promise you, I will do everything I can from now until forever to make this channel better and better and better. Thank you.